Okay, we unboxed the, the main core box of Massive Darkness 2. We found that we had just a couple of swords loose in the box. They can see, if I need to, I've got the video, this is still shrink wrapped. So, no question of uh, it having been opened before. So, let's get into this and see how good or bad the conditions of the minis are in this box. So, let's get this off. Yeah, I do enjoy the kind of linen finish that they put on these boxes, it's nice. Let's try and get this open, you always get that vacuum effect. There we go. Oh, what have we got on the bottom here? Oh, I see, that's, uh, that's just printed. I wonder if the bottom's actually got anything on it. No, the bottom does have that on as well. It'd be interesting to know if there's a difference in this piece of paper that they put on the bottom and what's actually on the bottom, but have a look at that afterwards. What have we got? Game components. Nice, you don't usually get that, you usually just get something inside the rule book. So this is saying the Dartbringer pack, which is what we're looking at now, is a Kickstarter exclusive box, contains all the Kickstarter exclusive stretch shells. That's great. So this, oh well that's why they've given it its own little book like this. There we go, so I don't want to show too much. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Then we've got this, which is our box insert. Don't know how that's got so mangled. Bearing in mind it's been inside this box, it must have got trapped under something and, and crushed. Also some kind of smear on it. Doesn't, doesn't really bother me. At the end of the day, it does the job it was uh, designed to do, so I'm not too worried. Okay, let's have a look. What's next then? Uh, box organisation. So we've got this little thing. Uh, okay, this is interesting. We turn this round. I don't know if you can. Oh, let me just point this out. If you look here. Oh, you can you can see. Sorry, I'm not getting the best angle here. But if you look here, you can see that this plastic insert is completely destroyed in this corner. I do not know what has happened there. Let's see if we can take it out. We've got our packs of cards. I'm not going to open up these packs of cards and go through those sort of on camera. I think that would be hugely boring. Right, we have one set of figures here. Right, regular Simon packing. Ugh, always some tape somewhere. So on this top level, if we look at our piece of paper, we've got this miniature set. Looks about right. Okay, well, let's see if there's any obvious damage. Nope. Heads there, that's there. I mean, I don't know everything that should be on these figures, of course. But uh, we'll see. A little bit thicker as well, these miniatures, so less likely for bits to fall off. Oh, I like that. It's kind of a, a cool... Cool miniature. There we go. All the spikes in place. Just a quick look. Yeah, these are not the most detailed miniatures at all. Um, did this one. There's very, very little detail on there. I'm sure you can still paint it up fairly nicely, but um, this one, not bad. This one, not bad. These two, really quite, quite basic. But I suppose if this one is all flame, and this one, I don't know what this one's supposed to be, ice, rock, I don't know, something like that. Let's see. Let's see the rest. Oh, I see this one, the detail's not bad at all. So maybe that's deliberate then. They, they intended those to be fairly smooth, untextured surfaces because of what they are. Probably paint up quite nicely afterwards. Uh, don't even know what that is, but 
interesting it kind of looks like these arms should be lower down but again can't tell if that's right or wrong but it looks all right to me so I'm not going to worry too much some sort of snake guy again everything looks okay I'm just looking for obvious stuff here broken broken like this one if the spear was broken or snake head is there it all, all looks fine to me Oh, <laughs> won't be if I keep dropping them like that. This guy, yeah. Yeah, no, good. So far, so good. Wow, how the heck did this go in? Just like that, I guess. Hmm. Okay, little guy similar, no problem. Sword is in place, slightly bent, but it's okay. Try and speed up a bit, looking for any obvious. Ooh, that's a bit wobbly, but wow, that is just connected by this tiny bit there, but that's fine. Yep. Okay, good. So no loose bits. I don't see any missing heads or anything like that, so that seems all right. I'm not sure exactly that I've packed these away very well. I'm really not sure about that big fella, but there we go. Okay, let's see if that fits back on. Yep, appears to be okay. Look at the next level down. Okay. Again, just as a reminder, we're just looking for broken weapons, broken swords, bits fallen off, double crossbows. Nice, very nice. Yeah, it looks like these ones are a bit uh, a bit sturdier, a bit better made. No loose bits there. Snake guys. Yep. Yeah. Yep, look good to me. Get the last two out. Yep, nothing, nothing obvious. Nothing uh, jumping out as missing or broken, etc., which is good. Okay. All right. Yep. I don't see any obvious missing bits or broken bits, etc. So I'm I'm fine with that. There's a shed load of miniatures in this game, so I'm not overly worried if they don't all have the most detail, etc. The the core ones, the heroes here, they seem to be quite well detailed. That's great. Okay, so, so far so good. No broken bits, no loose swords, nothing. That's great. What I am slightly more concerned about is the state of this. So let's have a look. No loose bits in the box. So what has happened there? Honestly, I'm not sure what to, to think of that. That is concerning. It's really been... Uh, oh, that's quite sharp. It's been mangled now question is what would you do would you contact Simon and say well oh come on what? <laughs> I'll have to ask what would people prefer I call them Simon or come on I don't really care but uh, if people have a preference let me know what would you do would you contact them and say hey look the miniatures are okay but the storage solution that you put them in is destroyed please send me a new insert uh, I'm not sure I think I might raise a request with them and see what they can do. It wouldn't surprise me if they say, oh, there's nothing we can do about that. Oh, <laughs> there's a bit of the broken, bit of the broken container there trapped in the tape. Ah, right, wow, well that's, that's been beaten to, uh, to hell. So, 
I'm expecting to find at least one or two damaged figures here because if it's been crushed that hard. So this is the figure, that's the figure in the section of the box that is most damaged. And actually, looks okay. Isn't it a shame, by the way? I don't know what you all think, but isn't that a shame? Just a flat, textureless base, no, no detail on there at all. Does it take them a bit more time than that to sculpt something on the base? Yes, of course it does, but not a huge amount. They could have just made this look like waves, ripples, something. I mean, I will do something probably with these bigger miniatures to make the base a bit more interesting, but that's such a shame to not, uh, not give that a bit more interest. I think all of them are the same, all of these flat, kind of boring bases. Um, he looks okay to me. You can see a bit of glistening glue or something there. That's fine. Okay. Oh, that's not a good noise. That's not a good noise at all. What have we got here? And what we have here is this figure. And it looks like there should be a hand right there. Okay, so that's fine. Remember what I told you before. I'm used to gluing minis together. I'm used to, you know, modifying them, magnetizing, etc. That's a big, sturdy joint. That's a, a trivial, easy thing to glue together. Uh, I'm not worried about that. At least we've got the weapon. That's, that's the most important thing. So that's fine. Um, they put that in here with this this in place. I'm, I'm wondering why that's there. What, what was this all about? I don't know what that was all about, but maybe they were hoping that that would protect the arm. I don't know if the arm is in place. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, uh, to me, just looking at that, it looks like the arm in being in place wouldn't actually be affected by that white sponge thing. No, it looks fine. So, no idea what that was for. Scorpion, that's a pretty sturdy model. See that, that's a bit, that's a bit poor. That is not a very good transition from one part to another. It looks like that's just been stuck on. Um, I might put some green stuff in there just to smooth it out a bit, make it look a bit more part of the hole. Yeah, other than that, not too bad. And we've got this person. Not bad. The spear has survived. The shield is there. Okay, that's good. I really should look at these before I take them out so I can put them back in. <laughs> oh dear, right, I'll work that out in a minute weird weird whatever beast but all the parts seem to be there no why can't i work out how that went in looks like it goes in on its side yes it does it goes in on its side like that okay what have we got left we've got this thing some sort of griffin, if I'm not mistaken. Armoured griffin. Yeah, again, slightly disappointed. Some it could have had a little bit more feather detail on there. Yes, perfectly serviceable miniature, but, but it could have just had a little bit more texture detail in there. But never mind, that's okay. That's like I say, you can't, uh, you can't expect everything every time. Right, why can't I get that back in properly? Again, I seem to be doing... Ah, there we go. Goes that way, upside down. Okay. See, look, they've just put a little bit more texture on these wings, and that just makes it a lot more interesting and a lot easier to paint. Because let's face it, if you just want to put a bit of paint on these, make them a bit nicer on the table, you can apply a nice um, base coat there, not, not too thick, and then a wash will immediately pull out all that texture, and for a lot of people, that would be enough. But if you were to do that with the one with the wings, you know, you put a base colour on there, put a wash on, 
you're not going to get any texture really on those wings so yeah no this is this is a bit better and then last one underneath here okay there we go now to be fair I wouldn't expect really much texture on this kind of bat style wing like this because they are usually smooth but they have got the ridges in here be able to get some shadows pooling into those uh, folds yeah not bad not bad okay so that's it I'm not sure I'll, I'll raise a support ticket with them just to ask about this but at the end of the day my expectations of them doing anything about something like this are pretty low but you know what it still works I just have to be careful not to uh, cut myself let's just have a quick look at the base of the box while we've got the opportunity can't help but wonder if there was something different now there is something different because as you can see from the text here it doesn't line up Massive Darkness is a uh, Massive Darkness 2 is a dungeon crawling board game for one to six players with no game master and streamlined rules players take their heroes on a series of quests to defeat the force of the dance oh okay interesting same words but uh, different sort of thickness different layouts so the uh, oh i see what they've been able to do they've been able to include the french section on here whereas on this one you can see no french and then is there any difference on the miniatures 23 enemies, 3 constructs, um, what else we got, uh, 2 spirit, 1 exo armour, 12 heroes, no, nope. no, nope. all looks pretty similar to me, yep, yeah. there we go, well that's, that's what that was, I put it in the bottom just as a keepsake, let's put these back in, so I'll glue that stack back on at a later date, really not concerned about that. I'm going to put this this way just to make that easier to spot when I open the box next time. Pop these in. There we go, in you go. There we go, that's all in. And then what was this? Put that there. Oh, I've got bits of sharp plastic turning up everywhere now. Need to be careful of that. Let's just there we go. Let's get in there. Okay. Again, I don't know exactly what I should have. I'm just going to take a look at this component book here. Let's see. I think I think this page probably explains what we should have in the pack. Put this over here so I can put stuff away as I find them. Right. Take a look at the cards. I said I wouldn't look at the cards, but I'm just going to have a quick look. Seeing as how it's gone to all the trouble uh, of giving me this, so I can easily find what should be in here. So it should have. I should have 12 mob cards, 12 hero cards, 12 mob cards. One, two, 11, 12, 12 mob cards. Well, that looks good to me. Pop those in the box. Then we are looking for 12 hero cards. Uh, that even matches the picture, so that's got to be one. One, two, three. Oh, that's it, that's the 12 hero cards, they're all there. I love when they give you something like this, this is brilliant. I wish, I wish every game company 
would put something in like this which tells you exactly what card numbers you're expecting and you can just go through and make sure you've got everything before you have trouble. Right, what have we got here then? Roaming monster cards. We need 36 roaming monster cards. Looks like we've got a bunch of them, so... Oh wow, there's loads of them. Now the only thing I will do is just try and ruffle these a bit because it's really hard to just get them to separate. Thirty-six. There we go. Not very gripping watching me do that, but there we go. Thirty-six roaming monster cards. That's excellent. What else are we looking for? We are looking for three boss dashboards. That's got to be these. One, two, three. Yeah, looks good. And tokens. 20 soul tokens. Yep, yeah, that's 20. I mean, you could see there was 20, but anyway. Again, what I do like, and I always say this is, even though the, the box has got damage, they have given us storage for tokens. So it's quite easy to just, boom, pop those tokens in there. That's great. I hate when you don't have uh, anywhere to put stuff. So we had 20 tokens. Then we needed 30 Judgment Poison Tokens, that's going to be these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 rows of 5 is 30. We are good. Again, really not very gripping for you watching this, but... They press out really nicely actually, the card seems a bit higher quality than normal. Yeah, the card, these tokens seem to be a slightly better quality card than we sometimes get with the uh, Kumon miniatures. And that just leaves four double-sided game tiles. And here we go. They are indeed double-sided. I can verify that. Yeah, let's just take a look at the edge. This is an area... Yeah, I mean, it, it's fairly stuck. I can see the laminate. Oh, I can see the lamination there. That's already already separating a bit. I find this with, with all of the games that I've had more recently. Bloodborne in particular, I noticed it. You have to be so careful now with the, the card that you get with uh, Simon Games. It's not quite up to the quality levels that it was up to before. Uh, which is a shame, but it's it's just the way it is. Ah! I just, I just realised by putting this this way around and this, it has actually messed up the storage solution. So I'm going to have to take this out. Take that out. Slide that over. Yeah, if you don't store it this way, then you can't fit the boards in. So got no choice. I have to do it that way. Wiggle it in. Come on, don't get stuck now. Ah, oh. that's irritating. There we go, he's in. Excellent. Put our boards on the top here. I mean, that is nicely done, though. That all fits really nicely. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then we can put this back. So that's good. So that is Massive Darkness, the Dark Bringer pack. This time it's Rainbow Crossing. This was a bit of an impulse buy. I just thought maybe my daughter, as she gets a bit older, this might just get her interested enough to, uh, to want to play this with me. I never know. She's still a bit young at the moment, but I hope one day that she'll want to play. Uh, as you can see, I'm just cutting into the cellophane now, so it's not been opened before same as last time we've got a loose insert i think as we realized last time it's really just this extra french bit that is missing but the rest of this looks the same yep so let's just have a look inside here and see what's going on 
Okay, rules and quests. Let's see if it's got a component guide. It has got a game components guide. So one thing I will say straight away is I like this black text, light background, easy to read. I can read all of that very easily. Nice, okay. I'm just gonna do that. Some people will be horrified that I'm bending it backwards, but I'm doing it carefully. There we go. This is not a hardback book after all. Let's check to see that we've got everything it says we should have. Right, first thing we see is that. We'll come back to that later. Just pop it over here. We've got some cards. We'll come back to that later. Interesting, we've got a, a piece of cardboard. <laughs> and that is protecting this big sort of Care Bear, Warrior Bear sort of thing. Um, I'm going to say a little bit similar to my comment on some of the other miniatures. I feel like the texturing on this could have been done with a little bit more finesse. I am not a miniature maker at all, but I feel like if somebody gave me this miniature and said, here it is, just apply some texture to these things, I could probably have done as good a job as this. I would have liked little bit finer texture but hey I suppose when you're painting this up you're going for a more cartoony kind of look so it, it might not matter uh, I'll keep that on because I don't know why not then we look in here wow that's a lot of box that's a that's a, a lot of thickness that we maybe didn't quite need that much right let's have a look any damage Horns are in place, tails on. Yep. Yep, different pose, which is nice. Another. Oh, I see, this one is obviously sort of the uh, the leader. And then we have these followers, but those, uh, those look okay to me. I don't see any obvious signs of damage. Four legs. I did open a box once and not not this game. I did open a different game once and find a dragon with uh, with no front right leg. That was a pretty pretty big piece to go missing. It wasn't in the box, so you don't always get checked too carefully. But this is looking good so far. Wings on, bows in place. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good so far. Yeah, nice. I think this might be fun to paint. Just cartoony, bright colours. Yeah, I think that could be quite good fun. Okay, so we found the leader, we got the minions, we've done that, yeah. Um, so let's have a look. There should be 12 item cards, 12 mob cards. Oh, these are the item, uh, they're mob item cards. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are indeed twelve of them. So I'll pop those down there. Then we're looking for There's a lot of cards in here. I think those are going to be the mob cards. Twelve, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Glad to see I can still count. Next, we're looking for. 60 fluffy aura cards. I am going to hazard a guess. There we go. Fluffy aura. No reason to guess. 60 of them. So let's just make this a bit easier. I must say these cards really don't want to separate very much. So one, two, three. I will fast forward this bit. Sixty cards. We have got all of them that it says we should have. That just leaves this. There we go. Get that out of the way. Okay. First thing that I see is twenty rainbow tokens. 
Um, is it just me who finds it really satisfying pushing these things out of the cards? Okay, looks good. 20 tokens, I think we can put those in there. And then we need, oh, upside down, double-sided boss dashboard. Why has it got a picture of two? That's, that's kind of fun. Double-sided boss dashboard times one, but there's two in the picture. I have got one, so I'm gonna assume that that's correct. And there is only one boss miniature, so I feel fairly confident that that is correct. But I do find it interesting that they uh, decided to think that there was more. Let's see if we can find a better space for these. I feel, I wonder if these cards will fit in here. Are these cards fit in there? Yes, the cards will fit up there. That will fit there. Now, is it just me or does anybody else think that this was designed for this to fit in it? But it doesn't fit in it, no. <laughs> Never mind. And that should leave us with four game tiles, double-sided. Well, yes, I see double-sided game tiles. Yep, yeah. four of those, all looks good to me. Put that on there, put that in. There we go, another box looked at. Here we are continuing with our Massive Darkness 2 unboxing. This is uh, Heavenfall campaign mode expansion. Cellophane is on. No question, I'm opening this for the first time while we watch. We are in. I'm getting kind of used to this now. We're expecting the paper on the bottom and we're not disappointed. There's the paper, there's the French. Everything else looks pretty much the same. Yeah, okay. Right, let's get into here and see what's in there. Okay, we have our rules and quest book. Is it as nicely done? Once again, great, nice black text on a pale background. Very easy to read. Love it, good job. That's what we want. Let's just gently do that so we can see what we should have in the box. Put that to the side for now. Put the cards to the side for now. More cards, lots of cards. Bag of dice. It's uh, quite an easy one to check straight away. We should have red attack dice times three, green defense dice times five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Excellent, we have got those. Then we need to take this out. Oy. Oh dear, the tape, the tape. <laughs> you know what? Let's see if we can do it any better like this. That's not too bad. Right, put that out of the way. Gonna find where they take this up. There it is. Uh, can't be bothered to try and peel that off. There we go. Right. Let's have a look what we've got in here. See if there's any damage. Wow. That is a huge miniature. Now, again, same comment that I had. Uh, I, I know I keep saying this. Um, bit boring really to keep saying it, but I'm gonna say it again anyway, which is, couldn't we just put a little bit of texture on this box? Oh, something's loose. Oh, we have a, we have a leg. And if you can see that, we, uh, we have a leg here from something. I'm guessing, should that be there? We have a stump. I would think that this leg goes something like, uh, let me try and get this better in the camera, something like that. Okay, don't know if you can see that. I think it goes just there like that. Again, no, no big deal. 
tiny bit of plastic glue, hold it in place with some tweezers, give it a few seconds, it'll be stuck, and that's done. What I can't fix easily is this horrible join. That is horrible. You can't miss that. There's no way you can sort of think, oh, is this, is this a single piece of dragon or whatever this creature is? That is a really nasty join. Um, rest of it, not so bad. Again, slightly disappointing wing texture. I mean, look at this. This is a massive feather. And it's just got a few lines in it. It's almost more like wood grain than, than feathers. That's a bit disappointing. But, um, yeah, a little bit better on the texture, guys. If you're watching this from uh, Kumon, Simon, a little bit more effort on the texture. And let's do something with the bases. It's really not that hard to put a bit of stuff on the base. Yeah. Okay, nothing seems to be broken off here. Everything seems to be in place on this guy. I don't know what glue they use, but you can see the kind of shine here. But uh, ah, that's fine, no problem. Bit of a spray, primer, undercoat, and that'll be no problem. Pop them back, okay. Have a look at this. Oh, doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's interesting. So this one you have to kind of pull it out, which I hate, because if you paint it and then you pull it out like that, it's going to rip the paint off. We have got... Yeah, I like this miniature. Now, there's not much texture on here, but I'm guessing this is supposed to be like smoke, and you wouldn't want much texture. You'd want it to be smooth. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've never really seen smoke with uh, hard edges. So that's not bad at all. Uh, <laughs> No prize for spotting the join. Um, bit of bit of green stuff or, or milliput, whatever you like to use, smeared over there, and that will will hide that. But uh, yeah, not not bad. Don't like the fact that it sort of needs to be pushed in. Yeah, don't like that at all. In fact, really don't like that. I don't know if it has to be pushed in or if it can be just wiggled in. Mm, can't really seem to get it back in exactly, so let's see, does it need to be pushed in? Hmm, can't really tell, that's strange. No, I feel like that is, that's in, I think. I think that's in. We'll find out when I try and put the lid back on. Just remember to keep the leg out of the way. Okay. Okay. And that just leaves down here these uh, little fellas. We have a sword. Oh, sorry, I realize you can't see. We have uh, swords in place. Yep, swords. Come on, get out. <laughs> Swords, swords, and swords. Excellent. There we go. We have them all in. Let's see if this will go back on. It won't go back on, which tells me that I have done something wrong here. That this is obviously. There we go. So you have to. You have to tuck tuck this part of the cloud, whatever, under here first, and then it will pop in. Oh, I hate that. I would like to paint that one day. I'll, I won't worry about it for now, but that's gonna be horrible when I try and come and paint it. But hey, at least this all fits back in now. That's in the box, right, great. Don't know where these bits of broken plastic have come from. That's a bit worrying. I didn't see any obvious broken, pl ah, no, it's here. There's little, there's breaks here. So again, another, another sort of insert that hasn't survived. That's a shame. That's a shame. Never mind. A dice down here at the bottom. Let's have a look at what else we should expect to find in here. 
we are looking for 60 mob item cards. These all look like mob items. Let's see, 60. There we go, 60 mob item cards. I can confirm they are all there. Rogue effect cards times two. Those look like rogue effect cards to me, so that's two of them. Spirit reference card times two. Flame spirit, frost spirit, looks like two. Berserker. Oh, these are, these are two skill cards. Okay, I see what's happened. The rest of the skill cards are in here. I couldn't fit quite all of them in this one pack. So two of them just spilled over into the other pack. Excellent. So that's our two from the 72 that we're looking for. That means there should be 70, should be 70 in here. Seventy-two skill cards. Interesting. These, these, some of these look different to the rest, but uh, that's fine. I'm sure as I uh, play the game and get to understand it all, that will become clear. Right. What else do we want? Campaign cards. Time thirty. Thirty campaign cards. Excellent. Legendary treasure cards, epic treasure cards. These are the epic treasure cards. These are legendary treasure cards. These are more epic treasure cards. This is legendary. Okay, so. 16 of those, that's great. That's what we were expecting. And the legendaries, we're expecting 38. That's 38. Excellent. That would appear to be all of the small cards accounted for. 24 roaming monster cards. These are these. One, two, three. Yep, 24 of them. We're looking for 30 mob cards. Thirty mob cards. Yep. Oh, good. And that leaves these. What have we got here? Set power cards by 12. Oh, I wonder if that's these. This must be these. Yes, it is these. You can see the colours. Blue and the uh, orange colours. Should be 12 of them. Yep, 12. It's not going to pack away properly with the dice in their little bag. So... I don't think the dice need to stay in the little bag. There we go, now those should all fit in. They do. Excellent. Right, what do we need to do now? We need to open this up and have a look what's in here. We have got two double-sided boss dashboards, excellent, that looks right, we have got this, which if I look at this side is the town dashboard, excellent, then we have campaign level token 6, that's got to be these, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep, 6 of those, wonder if they have a space where those are supposed to be stored. Don't see anywhere obvious. Unless they're where... Would they fit there? No. Not sure where you're supposed to store those cards. Doesn't look like they've thought about uh, what to do with those. So maybe they just sit on the top somewhere. Uh, okay, so that's on this side. Um, Double-sided game tiles by times four. Yep, 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 that seems to check out. Again, you know, it seems a little bit lacking in interest, some of these. 
feel like there could have been you know like on here we've got some some details here and there just to make it seem a bit more interesting but this one that's pretty boring really and that one uh, yeah that's that's really disappointingly boring I'm sure with all the miniatures on it in the middle of a game not going to notice that kind of thing right that just leaves the tokens we should have two companion tokens yeah we should have four legendary tokens let's go with these one two three four yeah we should have uh uses tokens times ten so we've got six seven eight yep yeah, we've got ten of those what does that leave that leaves rogue tokens which we should have nine of three six nine Here we have indeed what else does that leave oh a life bringer token by one i almost missed that there we go one life bringer token so we've got all of our tokens uh, it's, it's interesting, they've gone to some level of effort to provide storage for some of the bits, but not for all of the bits. I, I, it's kind of sort of interesting, I wonder what they think you're supposed to do with the bits they haven't given you any storage for. Maybe, maybe you put them in the rest of the game somewhere? I do not know. I uh, can only hazard a guess, but... Uh, Yep, I have no idea where you're supposed to put these things. So we can put all of this in. Put this all on. Oh, <laughs> knocking a camera and everything. There we go. And that is our... Oh, let's just notice this on the box here. Just slightly scuffed. But that is our Heavenfall box. Welcome back. This is the Four Horsemen Enemy and Campaign Box, all cellophane wrapped up. Let's see what's in here. Right. Same as always. Paper, separate paper with the French on. In the rule books or whatever that I've just quickly glanced through, so I'm not sure why they were worried about having French insert on the bottom. I don't see any French on here. Any French? No. No. No, nope, don't see any French. Very strange. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that. Game components. Let's just make sure we've got everything we're supposed to have. First off, we just get our good old pack of goodies out of the way. Again, this is quite quite a big insert considering. Yeah, we got we, we got at least half an inch or so of space there that we didn't need, but never mind. I'm sure they have some reason for doing it. Cards out of the way for now. Right, so here we go. Let's see. We have got our four miniatures. I think that one's got to be plague, judging by the uh, the mask. That he's wearing the beak mask. This one is uh, I can never remember. Is it um, famine? Is it? I want to say famine. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, it tells you on the uh, tells you on here. Yes, it was famine. This one. Oh, that's a shame. Almost stuck the sword on. Oh, <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so, I mean, that is an extremely thin point, but, uh, yeah, we can we can fix that. Not worth raising a, a, you know, a ticket to them to ask them to fix it. Really not worth it. And, um, gosh, I wish I could stop dropping stuff. Good old death. Although I see that they've changed from the traditional sickle. They've uh, gone for this sort of <laughs> looks like a massive tuning fork for a piano. But uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So we have all of our miniatures. Let's start with the small cards. We should have um, four special skill cards. There's the plague one. There's the famine one, the death one and the war one. Then we should have 16 punishment cards. Four for plague, four for famine, four for death, 
four for war. Okay, we've got all of those as well. So that's the small cards dealt with. Then we should have these big cards. How many of these should there be? There should be 24. That's 10, 20, 24. Let's have a look in here now. We should have a double-sided boss dashboard times by one. We do indeed have a double-sided dashboard. Then we, let's do these ones first, get them out of the way. Four double-sided tiles. That looks like death. Yeah, that looks like some other sort of thing to do with death. Plague, maybe, delightful green color. Now that looks the same. Well, that looks very similar. Uh, I'm not sure which one that one's supposed to be. Again, this side looks very similar. That one's got to be war, surely. All the swords, etc. So that must be, I guess that must be somebody's idea of famine. That one looks more obviously like war. Okay, so we have got four double-sided tiles. That's correct. And then we have the tokens. One war token, yep. 25 famine tokens, 25 plague tokens, 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 24 plus 1 is 25 and the same on this side. Oh look at that! That's interesting. I don't know how that's got turned around. How bizarre. You would assume it was printed like that. So when the machine has cut it, somehow it's managed to turn it around but leave it in place. Very, very interesting. I've seen that before. Get all these tokens out, see if they fit in the box. Looks like they have made provision in this box. So I don't know what was going on with the last box. They clearly haven't made provision for everything, but this one easily store everything nicely. No problems whatsoever getting everything in. So we'll pack that one away. So there is our four horsemen box. And so the massive darkness to unboxing continues. This reminds me why I need to be more careful with my pledging. It's so easy to just think, oh, I don't want to miss out on anything. I want to get every bit. That bit looks good. That bit looks good. And I've ended up with just box after box of stuff. And I'll probably never get through it all. I mean, not for lack of wanting to, but just, <laughs> just will never get the time to get through it all. Let's see what we've got in here. There's no uh, book or anything with this one. The tellers what components we should have. In this situation, I usually have to just go onto the Kickstarter campaign and check the details of what they said is in there. You, you sometimes get specific updates um, that you can go to that will talk about a particular expansion. And uh, through a combination of those and looking at the pictures, work out if we've got everything. What I will do for now though is just Check these while we're all here, see if there's any bits dropped off. Nothing dropped off that one, or at least nothing I can see. What about this one? Nope. Seems to be intact. This one seems to be intact. Yeah. Yeah. These all look like they have got all the bits they're supposed to have. And I think you need to layer them in from this side. They overlap quite a lot. Uh, the sad thing for me is I've got quite a few games by uh, Simon or Kumon. And um, it's interesting that one's back seems to be bent more than the other. And I feel like the quality of these miniatures is slightly, well, it's, it's it's not what I've come to expect from them, let me put it that way. 
Um, some of these remind me of some of the Bloodborne expansions where the quality of some of the miniatures in the expansions is really it's almost like a different company did the expansions compared to the the main core game and that might be true for all I know that might be exactly why uh, one thing I can say though here is at least all of the bits seem to be in place nothing seems to be broken so that's good and of course you know so many miniatures in this game if you have time to get through and paint everything you know good on you there we go right just pop that in there let's just have a look all we know if i just turn this over carefully is that we should have um 10 queen tokens six harpy minions one pixie oh okay sorry cards 10 queen tokens and 31 cards these look like tokens well, we've got 12 of them, that's a good start. Put those in there. 31 cards. Well, there's 13 of those. Twenty-five of those. Uh, 25 when you add that to those. We need six in here to get us to 31. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. 31 cards. So, got the right number of cards. Looks like that one is all correct. This is Druids versus Beelzebub. No idea what should be in here. Okay, well we've got a little leaflet in this one, that's good. Okay, tells you how to add the expansion. Doesn't tell us what should be in here. But we can maybe use this to give us a clue. We should have six plastic figures. One rules leaflet, well we got that. One dashboard, which I'm guessing is this. Three trackers. Okay, that's got to be this. Three trackers, that's these. And six tokens, that's got to be these. We've got our little container here. Where's the tape? There it is. There should be six plastic figures. Any breakages? We have this guy, some kind of insect, monster, whatever guy, but it looks like he's all in one piece. We have this kind of hunter, whatever guy, with a owl on his shoulder. I want to say owl, I don't know. We've got a big bird. I'm going to have to be careful with this one when it comes to painting. Because if I, normally I just use a, an aerosol spray to do the priming. Don't want to mess up the see-through um, pillar. Some kind of cat thing. Some kind of big raccoon thing, I think. And then the big bear. Yeah, the texture on this bear is a little bit better. I don't know why they couldn't have done that on most of it. But 39 cards we're looking for with this one. 39. So let's see if we can find 39 cards. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got six of those. So now we're down to 33. Five of those. So we're down to 28. And there are. So that's great. I like the fact, again, this box, they've got the storage worked out kind of nicely. Everything has a place to go. That's nice. Dashboard, leaflet. That's good. That's a nice little, nice little thought out box there. That's nice. Well, these keep on coming. This is a Heroes and Monsters set, Monks and Necromancers versus Paragon. We've got another little leaflet, how to include these in the game. That's great. We are looking in here for, let's see, five plastic miniatures, one rules leaflet, we've got the leaflet, one tracker, 35 tokens and 82 cards. A few more cards this time. Let's see if we can get these out. Oh, there's all our tokens and trackers, etc. Let's start by taking off the tape. Uh -huh. 
have. That's fine. Yep. A broom. Looks like a broom. Yep. Not sure what she's supposed to be. Okay. Okay, there we go. No bits dropped off. All looks good. Oh, okay, there's better information on the back. Let's try and hold these miniatures in place. Four heroes, one paragon. We found that. One rules leaf, but we got that. One soul track. Oh, there goes my So that's got to be the soul track. There we go. One soul track. One soul track token. Three small bind tokens. So I'm guessing that's a large bind token. These are three small bind tokens. Then we want a soul track token. That's got to be this little skull here. That's the only thing small enough to, to track on there properly. Yep, so that's all of those found. Then we want 30 monk tokens and 82 cards. These have got to be our monk tokens. We've got uh, four by two, four, six, seven. It's 28 plus two is 30. So yeah, they're all there. Right, that's all of our monk tokens. Will this all fit in? I hope it will. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> Not exactly. Let's see if we can jiggle it around a bit. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Jiggle it around. Shake them around. Yep, yeah, I think we're okay. I think we are okay. Great. And then our 82 cards. So we've got uh, 10, 20, 34, we've got 50 there, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we've got 56 cards there, there's a smaller cards, 56, a couple of new types here, Necromancer and Monk, so we've got all their skill cards, etc, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, so we're looking for 20 more cards, and there is. So we've got all the cards, all the tokens, all the figures. Let's put the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's put the leaflet on top of there. And those, excellent. This time it's a hero monster set for bards and tinkerers versus metal angel. I'm actually thinking, I'm trying to remember what I did. I don't think I did go all in in the end. There was just a ridiculous amount of content. I think, well, <laughs> I'll have to check actually. I think I might have just selected stuff I want, but looking at the amount of stuff I've got, maybe I did just go all in at the end in the pledge manager. Anyway, right, let's see. Bards and Tinkerers. What should we have in here? We should have uh, five plastic miniatures, one rules leaflet. There's our rules leaf. As always, let's start with the miniatures. Okay. Well, I shook the, shook the hell out of those, didn't I? Let's see if we can get them back where they should be. In there. And there, right, let's have a look at these moves then. So this must be our Metal Angel. Both swords are in place, a little bit bent. Now, what you're supposed to do with that is use uh, hot water. Leave the miniature in reasonably hot water uh, for a little while until it softens a bit and then you kind of move the sword into position. I've had limited success with getting them. I, it's easy to bend them when they're soft, but they, for some reason they seem to remember and go back to the bent position afterwards. But um, we'll see. Um, yep, no swords or anything dropped off there. That's good. Um, this guy. What is that that he's sort of wafting around there? I'll have to look at some of the um, artwork and that to see what that's supposed to be. Looks like some musical instrument with a, a cloth. <laughs> I don't know. Um, who's this chap? We have somebody here who is uh, less abled. Looks like a mechanic, ju judging by the humongous wrench over his shoulder. Here, another kind of musician, I would say. Or a bard, I guess they would call it in this, but uh, yeah. Okay, so it looks like we've got all the miniatures in good shape. 
Then we're looking for 18 tokens and five dashboards. Well, you know what, let's start with the dashboards. Five dashboards. Well, I see, I see bar dashboard. That can't be right. Let's have a look what it says on the bottom of the box. A little bit more detail on the bottom of the box, so it, it's actually better than, than this piece of paper. Four heroes, one metal, one rules here, 79 cards, one exo armor token. Right, let's have a look for an exo armor token. That's this one, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh no, 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 this one. One exo armor token in the token box. Four exo armor dashboards. Mm, let's deal with more tokens. Three small bomb tokens. One, two, three. All right, we'll just take those. Put them in the token repository. And three large bomb tokens. That's these. One, two, three. Five note tokens. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, yeah, we got those. Three chord tokens. I guess these could be chord tokens. And so what are we missing? Three construct tokens. These are the constructs. There we go. Right, that's great. We've got everything accounted for that we should have. Then we want one bard musical dashboard. Right, well, it, that's the bard musical dashboard. It's got to be these things then. Let's, let's see. Uh, okay, okay. These... These kind of come out, I see. Right. Oh, that hasn't disengaged particularly well. Okay. Steam jet range attack. This this has got to be. I'm not sure. That, okay, this is an interesting different dashboard to the other ones we've seen. So that's got to be one of them. That's one. And then here we have. That's got to be another one, so that's two. It says we should have four XO armor dashboards. Well, okay, so these, right, well, that's what confused me. They don't, they don't look anything like the dashboards that we've seen so far in the other boxes. But then why should they, hey? Why should they? And the last one, four. There we go. Okay, so we have got four dashboards, that's great. What does that leave? We've got all our tokens, all our dashboards. It just leaves 79 cards. That's 72 cards need to find. 62 more cards to find. Sixty-two cards, that's perfect. Excellent. Cards, dashboard, again, put the leaflet there, I think, just to help hold stuff in place. The dashboards can go in. Hmm, that one is slightly bigger. Put that on the top. And that's another box done. This is the Kickstarter upgrade pack, which guess, if I remember right, is for the old Massive Darkness 2. The Massive Darkness 2 Kickstarter upgrade pack brings you components to convert the original Massive Darkness heroes, enemies and quests to Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape, including Kickstarter exclusive content. So let's see, this pack includes two campaigns that adapt the original Massive Darkness and the Crystal and Lava Quest to Massive Darkness 2 campaign mode. Massive Darkness 2 is a dungeon crawler, blah, blah, blah. Massive Darkness, Massive Darkness 2, Hellscape are needed to play. Heavenfall expansion needed to play the campaign. Okay, interesting. Cool. Let's have a look what's inside it. It's quite heavy, so it feels like it's a lot of uh, paperwork and probably cards as well. Obviously no miniatures, because it's to reuse the miniatures you already have. Now I got this purely because I have got the Massive Darkness 1 game. And it seemed a shame to me to not uh, have the ability to, to play that with what are hopefully improvements in Massive Darkness 2 in terms of how the rules etc all work. Oh wow, okay there we go. Sometimes find if you just give this a bit of an extra fold it will be easier to get it in and out next time. 
Okay. So, we have a rules and quest book. Does it have a component list? Doesn't seem to have a component list. No. Missions. More missions and quests. Okay, so that's not going to help us. Hopefully. Oh. Okay, we've got the piece of paper. We've got this. They look very similar this time. Sometimes there's a bit more information on one than the other. But okay, well, we'll use this piece of paper to try and help us. Oh, man. So if I open all of these, they are going to go everywhere. I don't think I'm going to do that. I would rather leave these... I mean, obviously there's no swords or bits of miniature broken or whatever, so that's not going to be a problem. Um, we can see we've got three dashboards here, which is one of the things in the rule book. But if I start to open all these up, I am just going to have cards everywhere. Um, so, I think I will leave that. Yeah, I'll leave that. But looks like it's all there obviously I'd have to count the cards but I'm certainly not worried about damage it all looks absolutely fine so I will just leave this for another day I think put this back in here pretty optimistic of me to think that I would ever get time to play all of the Massive Darkness 2 content that I've got and then find time to go back and play Massive Darkness 1. But that's me, <laughs> Mr. Optimism. Okay. This was a Zombie Side Fantasy crossover. Now, I don't have Black Plague, but I do have Green Horde. And I was told that this would work with Green Horde as well. And if we look at the back, again, we've got our leaflet here, but you can see. This Zombicide Fantasy crossover pack brings 165 cards that port a wide array of content from Zombicide Black Plague and Green Horde to Massive Darkness 2. It also allows for many of the Massive Darkness 2 heroes and enemies to be played in Zombicide Black Plague and Green Horde. Obviously you need to have, um, you know, <laughs> you need to have Green Horde or Black uh, Plague to be able to do it, but uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Oh, interesting. So you can use some of your stuff from Zombicide Green Horde or Black Plague. Let's see if we can get this open a bit. There we go. In the Massive Darkness game, or you can use the Massive Darkness characters in the Green Horde and Dark, uh, yeah, Dark Plague. So, oh. so here we have a Necromantic Dragon. Yep, I remember that. I've got that in the Green Horde box, I believe. Oh, there's some other stuff in the box that hasn't come out. There we go. Ah, here we go. So, the Zombicide Fantasy Crosser allows players to use the survivors and zombies from Zombicide Black Plague and Zombicide Green Horde in Massive Darkness 2. That's great. It also allows players to use many of the Massive Darkness 2 heroes and enemies in Zombicide Black Plague and Zombicide Green Horde. The Zombicide Fantasy crossover contains cards to use Zombicide Fantasy miniatures as heroes, mobs, roaming monsters and a boss. Boss. This pack contains a new quest and a new boss dashboard, allowing players to use the Necromantic Dragon as a boss. So I'm guessing the quest is... There it is. The quest is there. And we already found the... You know, we already found the dashboard for that, so that's great. Heroes. Zombicide fantasy survivors may be used as heroes. Each hero is a specific class, just like heroes from Massive Darkness 2. To include them in your games, simply add them to the pool of available heroes that can be chosen. Note that some of these heroes have classes that are not in the Hellscape core box and require expansions. Monks, necromancers, bards, tinkerers and druids. So, interesting. Let's have a look then. There we go. So what's this? This is uh, zombie side. This is so that you can use your characters from Massive Darkness Two in the zombie side games because um, if you had the original zombie side, you know that the player dashboards were actually quite big. They were more like more like that size. 
but they revamped it and got these plastic dashboard holders and changed everything so they look more like this now so this is to be able to play your massive darkness 2 characters in zombie side that's great much simpler game zombie side i gather so there you go quite quite straightforward so don't think it tells you the numbers of these cards 28 zombie side abomination cards 28 zombie side id cards well these are the id cards so there should be 28 let's have a look one Twenty-eight, yeah. And I have got, I think, most of those. I think I've pretty much got everything. Maybe I did go all in. I must check what I did. This feeling that I just went all in in the end. Right, so that's that. And then it says there will be 28 zombie side abomination cards. Now, the abominations are the boss characters in the zombie side games. These will be these cards. They mingle in with your zombie cards and when you are spawning zombies each turn, you turn it over and you go, oh my god, I've got the Reaper. And uh, that basically means that you're going to spawn the Reaper onto the onto the board and it's going to do what it does. So, yeah, there they are. So there should be 28. 28 there are. Then we get into slightly more tricky thing because obviously this is your massive darkness cards um, should be 30 roaming monster cards I'm, I'm not going to open them pretty sure there is and 54 mob cards that's 25 hero cards and 54 mob cards that's got to be these again I don't think I'm going to bother opening all of those they're so just going to go everywhere we've got our leaflet and everything make sure we put those in that way around so they don't get damaged and that's our crossover box. Excellent. I think these are the final two items that I got with my pledge for Massive Darkness 2. We'll unbox these. Uh, I always like to add some 3D scenery terrain if it's available in a campaign. So here we have got the 3D pack for Hellscape. Here we go. Sort of mouths coming from the ground, anvils, There's some kind of spike trap. Yep, we got a. Oh, cannot hold stuff today. Spike trap, yep, excellent. Some statues and some sort of portal type things. Oh, great, lots of skulls. Dead easy to paint stuff with skulls on. Bones and skulls, really, really easy to get a really nice effect. That's great. Oh, there's a card in here. What's the card? One wound, lose one action. These are stickers of some kind. Four portals, four bear traps, four fountains, four forges, six spike traps. Ah, I think these go underneath and you you don't know whether you're going to get a heal four or a heal three or fully heal and the same with these wounds you don't know whether it's going to be a one a two or none and you have to simply put these under here you just don't know what you're going to get until you get it ah okay cool and then the other box that they got like this this one which is, as you can see, doors and bridges. Let's have a look at some doors and some bridges. A bridge. Yep, that's a bridge. And a door. And the door opens and the crowd goes wild. Hey, there we go. Interesting. Don't know how whether that'll make it easy or not to paint, but it's going to be many years before I get around to painting. There we go. And that, I believe, is everything that I pledged for with Massive Darkness 2. Finally done.